must be an uneducated, chippy little oik. Hello everybody, this is a feel good video. It's designed to lighten the mood of anybody watching and boy, do we need cheering up because here in the UK, we're experiencing a horrific cost of living crisis, which meant over the recent winter months, most of us couldn't even afford to put on our heating and it's 2023. The term indoor coat has entered the British vernacular. We've experienced 13 years of conservative party rule and a disastrous Brexit. And as a result, nothing works anymore everybody's on strike, everybody's depressed, everybody is broke, life is truly shit. So what better way to make us smile again than by telling you the story of how one far-right propagandist ruined his burgeoning career as well as his future job prospects too. He fucked it all up within the space of 11 short months and ended up destroying his reputation forever. This is the superb schadenfreude story of Darren Grimes, whose career is in the shitter, despite being known as Britain's craftiest grifter. When it all gets dark again, the whole thing falls apart, I guess. It doesn't really matter about the pay, cause we'll get through it anyway. We'll get up and grift again, cause we could be grifting. A grifting, a grifting, a grifting. Yo, oh, I could be grifting, yeah, from the shadows, yeah. grifting. Yo. Oh, we could be a grifting of today, grifting all the way. You and I are gammon, baby, grifting. No grifting, grifting, oh yeah, yeah. Darren Grimes isn't this guy's real name, by the way, and I'll explain more about that later, so keep watching. So first of all, what is a grifter? Can I sum up a grifter in a sentence? Yes, I can. It's someone with a platform, normally a decent sized platform, who accepts money from paymasters and they decide what he or she says on that platform. Can I sum up a grifter in two words? Yes, I can. Propaganda machine. But Darren Grimes wasn't always a propagandist for hire. During his teenage years, Darren was a hairdresser and later a failed fashion student. Here he is supporting Norman Lamb for the Lib Dem leadership. Darren's views weren't yet a mixture of anti-LGBT bile and non-stop transphobia and targeted online hatred towards brown-skinned people like Sadiq Khan, Marcus Rashford, Diane Abbott, Meghan Markle, David Lammy and so on. In fact, Darren's views used to be the complete opposite of what he's paid to be like today. Here's an example. The fact that in 2015 we have kids who are self-harming due to homophobic bullying is disgusting, it is wrong. And the government is not acting fast enough on adopting sex and relationship education to teach kids about homosexuality, about transsexuality. We should be taught from a young age that these are normal things. These people are normal people within our society that you are going to meet. Why is more not being done for these poor kids? Imagine if Darren Grimes supported trans rights today. His audience would leave him in their droves. Darren also says this in his video. It angers me that the, the establishment at the moment talk about aspirational policy and an aspirational Britain. They are killing aspiration. And then within 12 months of making this video, he went on to create a Brexit group to support the Leave campaign, which... I mean, do I need to finish this sentence? Is the opposite of aspirational. The establishment class in this country threw the total weight of the state against me for having the audacity to campaign for leave. I faced bankruptcy in my early 20s, but thanks to kind, quiet patriots, I managed to crowdfund and fight back. I won against a biased electoral commission that had stacked itself against our vote for British independence. He quickly learned that being a right-wing mouthpiece was a much more lucrative career. He fronted a Brexit campaign that was initially only viewed by 6,000 people, until he was handed well over half a million pounds to spend on his campaign a mere 10 days before the referendum vote. The huge donation wasn't properly declared, which landed Darren Grimes and his Brexit campaign in court. However, Darren appealed the ruling and appealed the £20,000 fine that he paid 
which by the way wasn't paid from his own pocket it seems it, but it looks like it was a large pot of money raised through crowdfunding totaling almost a hundred thousand pounds that helped him out darren won his appeal due to his quote lack of understanding when it came to keeping records of donations he received, which has been interpreted on one website as he was incompetent when it came to filling out paperwork, and by another website as a man legally deemed too stupid to fill in a form. When you consider that the appeal ruling meant that his £20,000 fine was paid back to him by the court, plus all of his court costs too, it appears Darren may, possibly, still have the £93,000 he raised via crowdfunding. Plus, he's had other lucrative campaigns as well, despite this one, for reasoned, being a platform that's owned and already funded by Turning Point UK. Yet he still needs more money. This is why Darren on Twitter is often asked, where did all the money go? Meanwhile, there are many British companies that are going out of business because of new Brexit rules regarding trading with the EU, right? And as Brexit was achieved, thanks to campaigns like Darren's, you think the least Darren could do is lend some of those businesses a few quid that he might just have lying around the place, you know? He does appear to have a nest egg that he could give to some of the immiserated working class he pretends to care so much about. Almost seven years has passed since the referendum and just over three years has passed since we left the EU. And in that time, only bad things have happened to the UK. And I regularly challenge fans of Darren Grimes to name one single benefit that's come from Brexit. The rules are you can't say abstract things like sovereignty as an answer, which is meaningless, or to have delusional claims like taking back control as an answer, because that's clearly a lie you've been sold. There's no control whatsoever. And in the two years I've been asking this question to Darren's fans, in Darren's replies and in videos and so forth, I've yet to receive one single example of a benefit of Brexit. But by all means, if you are a fan of Darren or fan of grifters in general, why not drop me a little comment below outlining in detail, I must add, a single benefit of Brexit because we've been waiting a long time. Nothing's happened just yet. give you more detailed examples of Darren's grifts later on in this video but first let's find out more about the man himself. As I mentioned earlier Grimes isn't Darren's real surname it is in fact Hutchinson Darren Hutchinson and he will block anyone who uses their free speech to point this out to him. I know this firsthand. But to be fair to Darren Hutchinson he has mentioned mostly on Twitter how his mother's previous partners have been abusive people so I do have a lot of sympathy for him in that sense no surprise that he wants to forget anything that connects him to his past like the time he was a liberal who didn't earn money from hatred that side of him has been buried too it seems so here's darren identifying as someone who he is not and weirdly none of his fans seem to be upset by this and it's because they're all hypocrites and i will talk more about grimes's fans hypocrisy shortly so stay tuned for that Thankfully, people who aren't fans of Darren Grimes have discovered that he does have a nickname. I think I mentioned it on here before, but my cousin went to school with Darren Grimes and everyone called him Crafty Wank because he was caught beating off under his desk in year nine. Now, what makes all of this even funnier is Darren's reaction to that tweet. Notice that Crafty isn't even tagged in the post, right? Which means he was either informed that this tweet exists or even worse, he Twitter searches the words Crafty Wank quite regularly just to see if anyone has revealed that he has a nickname and if you're subject to a revelation such as this it's really important how you handle it famously david cameron former british prime minister ignored the allegations that as a university student he inserted his penis into the mouth of a dead pig and simulated sex with it This did David Cameron no favours because he was part of Eton's Bullingdon Club who were well known to behave badly and have initiation ceremonies. Therefore, the allegations were totally believable and truly it was the best time to be on Twitter ever. Crafty took a different approach to David Cameron and these rumours which has massively backfired for him. 
in the most hilarious way possible, as this exchange proves. I think I've mentioned it on here before, but my cousin went to school with Aaron Grimes and everyone called him Crafty Wank because he was caught beating off under his desk in year nine. Very funny, just to let you know, I've emailed my lawyer and I'll be instructing him to prosecute you to the full extent of the law. That sounds cool. Looking forward to hearing from your lawyer, Lamau. Take your post down immediately, pet. I'm really not messing about here. You better tell me your name now. I want to know who you are, like. You want my name? Yes, and mark my words, you're going to regret your tweet. What's your cousin's surname? I can see his first name is Ben, can he, lad? My name is Penis Balls. Which law am I breaking, by the way, just so I can prepare for court, Lamau? You'll find out soon enough, like. It'll be great having all your old school chums testifying that you jacked your little pud in a lesson. Unless, of course, you can prove otherwise. <laughs> and to this day, every time Darren posts some of his propaganda on Twitter, 90% of all the replies he receives are just people calling him crafty wank. There is unfortunately some sad news to come from this incredible hilarity, which is an additional hilarious tweet by the same whistleblower didn't go viral. And I think it's a bit of a shame. Oh, and someone recorded him taking a shit from start to finish and put it on YouTube and he noticed mid wipe. So he's screaming and crying with his hands full of shitty tissue. Very funny stuff. <laughs> Now, as a disclaimer, be very serious for a second, I do not condone bullying in any form whatsoever. And these events of the past that I've just, that happened in the past, that were from the past that I've just outlined, right? These should be condemned, right? There's no place in society for events like this. However, as Darren is technically employed to pick on and attack and bully gay people, trans people, brown skinned people, poor people, the police, and anyone who doesn't have his exact far right leanings. I do condone the present use right now, the actual time we're living in here, of those tweets from the past. Understand? After all, how is it fair for Darren to hate others for a living and get paid really well for doing so, but we can't take the piss? out of a literal wanker for free. Doesn't seem fair, does it? Crafty's tweets have a lot in common with many other grifters. If his lot have been controversial and they often are for attention, he will condemn cancel culture that is coming for them and he'll, he'll say that free speech is the most sacred thing and he should be allowed to say whatever he wants without pushback. But then he will support cancel culture and despise free speech if that speech offends him personally, the massive snowflake. We don't pay our taxes like for police officers to make political statements. If you take the knee or say free Palestine, you should be sacked, Caddy lad. Grifting, grifting up today, grifting all the way. From the shadows, we could be grifting, yeah. From the shadows, yeah. Grifting, grifting up to new horizons. Crafty Wank hates identity politics and people who play the victim. But in order to rally against that practice, Darren uses identity politics and plays a victim, as this tweet proves. The left truly despise me like with a passion because despite being working class and gay, I refuse to subscribe to their victim and identity based politics, apart from in his tweet like. In videos on my channel from 2021, The Death of GB News Part 1 and 2, I predicted that the original model of GB News would not last for long. I predicted that the channel would forever be controversial for all the wrong reasons and how they would rapidly move further and further to the right in order to retain the very small amount of views they have. It would become Britain's Fox News within a matter of months and here we are, a year and a half later and all those things have come true. Andrew Neil vanished after just a few weeks, and after a presenter knelt down to show solidarity with anti-racist campaigners, some shows ended up literally putting in zero viewers. Bosses quickly resorted to employing Nigel Farage and Darren Grimes to get on board with people who hate anti-racism, and now the channel is in serious trouble for broadcasting multiple conspiracy theories and an incredible amount of misinformation. This should have been a boom time for Darren Grimes, aka Pound Shop Farage, but he struggled to attract punters to his GB News show. This was confirmed when I asked someone who had access to the official Barb TV viewing figures, which are subscription only, and you gotta pay a lot of money for, basically. 
Are you able to screenshot the average amount of viewers Crafty Grimes pulls in? I know he got 10,000, sod all, last weekend, but it would be nice to see the overall trend. Alternatively, how many viewers does a repeat of Columbo get versus Darren Grimes' show? The average is about 10,000 viewers, but has seen shows get only 2,000 before. Just one more thing. Columbo gets around 100,000 viewers opposite him on a Sunday. Ouch. Surprise, surprise, that's probably why Darren Grimes never boasted about his TV viewing figures. On Twitter, 20,000 people online calling him crafty every day. 20 people watching him on telly, their faces getting redder by the second. Oh. GB News attracted even more negative attention due to its links to Russia that were revealed on Twitter and in the newspapers. They detailed how Putin's homeland was allegedly financing the channel, with particular attention being paid to Christopher Chandler. This could also explain why Darren very briefly joined many other prominent far-right figures by defending Vladimir Putin in this video for Reasoned. All of which resulted in Darren's news channel being known as KGB News for many months to come. However, Darren's downfall actually began when it was revealed that he was fired from GB News and no one bothered to tell him about it, as James Hill from The Spectator revealed. Crafty responded with, Oh man, this is news to me, like, I love GB News and the values of the channel and those that tune in to watch my show, I'm on holiday like at Biker Grove. But before his vacation had even finished, Darren Grimes was revealed to be the Prince Andrew of propagandists due to claims that he sexually harassed a young, junior, straight, male member of GB News' staff. As Politicalite reports, Darren Grimes stalked him, threatened to have him fired and sent him abusive messages. Darren turned up at his flat and tried to get in and lured him to his hotel room at the infamous GB News Hilton. He was accused of abusing his position of power at the broadcaster. Our GB News insider claimed he abused his authority to demand the relationship with a junior staffer. The lad was threatened with losing his job if he did not comply. Now despite the controversy, Darren announced on Twitter that he was still employed by GB News and would return to his show just a few weeks after his holiday had ended. He was, as his Twitter bio points out, not yet cancelled, although he also deleted all of his tweets, which is totally what an innocent man would do. Weirdly, the website Pop Bitch of all places seemed to have the inside knowledge of what was happening behind the scenes at GB News and regularly emailed updates to their subscribers. What was going on with Darren Grimes being fired and then being allowed back on air? Well, it seems Darren had been called into a misconduct hearing, which practically everybody in the company took as a sign that he was being handed his papers. What they didn't bank on was Grimes having someone to fight his corner, a man no stranger to the attention of HR departments, Dan Wooten. There's been quite a bit of internal fallout at GB News over the Darren Grimes misconduct hearing. The outcome has sharply divided staff. Most are staggered that Grimes has been allowed to continue on air after they learnt the extent of the harassment to which he subjected some junior members, plural, of staff. The top bosses, meanwhile, seem to be more focused on protecting the on-screen talent and finding ways to paper over the problems instead. One proposed fix, they suggested, to an employee who lodged a formal complaint about Grimes' conduct, that they would text that employee to give him a heads up if Grimes was ever due in the studio at the same time as the employee, so the employee could make himself scarce. Textbook safeguarding. Unsurprisingly, the man, who's not yet cancelled, ended up being fired. And I like to think it was due to a combination of poor ratings plus the horrific sexual harassment allegations. Thing is, when it comes to allegations against grifters or far-right personalities in general, I've noticed a very strange thing that happens to their fan bases. These fans spend vast amounts of their time decrying grooming gangs and mocking gay people and anything that happens that's pro-LGBT. But when a far-right LGBT person is alleged to have done a bit of grooming himself, the whole thing is completely ignored by his fan base. It would seem that if one of their own is guilty of the very things that their fan base despises, the fan base simply looks the other way. And the whole thing, in my opinion, is deeply, deeply disturbing. Here is a perfect example of a Darren Grimes fan brushing a potential sex crime under the carpet. Ronald says, Miss you on GB News, don't really know what happened, but wish you luck in your new venture. 
And someone replies, men behaving badly, but nobody died and everybody's moved on. Not only does this person excuse the allegations uh, that were made, but possibly due to poor English, or because they're stupid, or maybe they meant it, they also say it's men behaving badly rather than one man, Darren Grimes. So arguably, this person is throwing a bit of victim blaming into the mix too. But for me, the very worst example of grifters fan bases ignoring their hero's crimes is an incident involving Lawrence Fox and this will become relevant to fans of Crafty as we go along. Lawrence Fox declares phenomenal victory over controversial family sex show. A year ago, almost to the day, Lawrence Fox saw that a theatre show was planning on teaching kids about sex and relationships and their bodies, but the actors in that show made the terrible decision to include nudity in the show to an audience of children who were accompanied by their parents. Now, despite hating cancel culture and loving free speech, Lawrence Fox got the show cancelled and essentially removed all free speech related to the show, despite it only being a planned show. And it's really important to clarify here, the show was never performed, it was merely planned and advertised. Now, like most people, I actually agree with the cancellation of this show. It seems a very weird way to teach kids about these subjects. I mean, at the very least, use diagrams, not your actual penis, to show them what a penis looks like. The whole premise was always going to get the gig cancelled. Now, the campaign Lawrence was involved with says that it was never about banning freedom of expression, but instead protecting children. But this is what leads us to a huge hypocrisy carried out by Lawrence Fox himself and his fan base, surprise surprise, ignored every aspect of it because here is Lawrence Fox, a naked adult, standing in front of a 15 year old girl, a child, his groin, which is exposed, is pointed towards her, she appears uncomfortable and unlike the theatre show, which was never performed, this naked incident between Lawrence Fox and a child actually happened. Plus, I was exposed to this when it was shown in cinemas when I was just a teenager. I wasn't even an adult myself. An audience review of the movie states it was extremely uncomfortable watching the sexualisation of both young women in the movie as well as Lawrence Fox's full frontal nudity. The groping scenes were quite unsettling, especially since Keira Knightley's character was being restrained at the time. And I'm genuinely disturbed that this is openly available on Netflix. One may argue that everything I've just covered there is worse than a planned theatre show that never went ahead. But when I pointed out this hypocrisy to Lawrence Fox, he blocked me on two of my separate accounts. When I pointed out Lawrence's hypocrisy to his fan base, they either ignored my posts or they simply said, bloody hell, he's got a long neck, it's like a giraffe, isn't it? Now that is actually worse than simply ignoring the posts that I put because they've actually taken the time to read my account of Lawrence's hypocrisy and then desperately try to deflect from it as well as ignoring the hypocrisy. It's doubly worse. My theory is that fans of far-right grifters love them so much because they simply need someone who keeps them angry 24-7 and all of them stating aloud together online that they hate the sexualization of children means they simply cannot acknowledge when their heroes are guilty of sexualizing children. So, therefore, Darren Grimes, who regularly tweets his disapproval of young people being groomed and sexually exploited, has managed to do a bit of that himself, it seems, according to these allegations. And that practice that he's involved with, allegedly, should have resulted in outrage from his fan base. They, they should disown him straight away, but instead, they simply refuse to acknowledge that anything happened whatsoever, because to them, Hating trans people online is more important to them than addressing hypocrisy within their ranks. And I really didn't think it would happen. But it really is the end of the line. I'm not sorry that I turned to grifting. And I'll be grifting for a long, long time. I've been grifting for a long, long, grifting for a long, long, grifting for a long, 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 fucking long, forever grifting.
on the day of recording right now, 21st of March 2023, there has been some breaking news. Um, you're all thinking life is looking pretty bleak for old crafty wanker university dropout who's unemployable in any sector except the gammon baiting industry. And Darren's downfall has had an unexpected upturn because he's got his job back at GB News. He revealed it using quite a cryptic little tweet. Here it is. I've been busy working on something to dear that I hope you'll enjoy. Sadly for my detractors, it isn't my early retirement. Shearer, shearer, shearer. It was pointed out that he can't actually retire from being unemployed. And he lost the only job he ever had. But nevertheless, Darren is back. For more information on this, let's go over to Pound Shop Candice Owens, a.k.a. the cosplaying vicar, a.k.a. Calvin Robinson, no relation to Tommy Robinson, even though both of their far-right politics are exactly the same. I'm presiding the brilliant Darren Grimes, who is making a triumphant return to our screens in the presenter's seat next week at 8pm. OK, live reaction to the GB News trailer. Let's go. New to GB News is the Saturday Ooh. Five. Join Saturday us every five. Saturday at 8pm as we debate the week's stories, controversies <laughs> and issues. I wonder how many of these people are straight, like really up crafty straight. Careful guys. Five, five times the debate. Five times the debate. Five times the fun. The five Saturday times the five. Saturday, Saturday Five at eight. five o'clock at eight o'clock on, on GB News. News. The People's Channel. Britain's <laughs> News Channel. You can wink at the end. Make your mind up. Did you say wink? Did he say wink? Christ. You could wink at the end. I can't believe I can't Brittany's wink. listening. <laughs> you could wink at the end. You could wink at the end. From everything you've seen in this video, I imagine quite a lot of you are sickened by the fact that a man accused of sexual harassment against one or two men, straight men, has got his job back. And a lot of gammon who I hate watching right now are probably quite eager to get into the comment section and say, well, now that this has been proven. But at the same time, Crafty is well known. There's a lot of history of him suing or taking legal action against people who have slighted him in any way. Here's him threatening to take legal action against the BBC. He's, of course, taken on the Electoral Commission. He's threatened to sue the guy who revealed he was called Crafty Wank. But he's not said a single word about these sexual harassment allegations, even though this screenshot here proves that he was told by the people who broke the story about the allegations, asking for comment. He didn't even deny them. He just at the time said he would be back on GB News that weekend a few months ago. So why hasn't he taken legal action this time? What has happened to the victims of his sexual harassment? Do they still work at GB News? Are they still being made to leave the room when Darren walks in? Is that gonna happen in the future? Have they signed non-disclosure agreements or will the information that they have about these allegations become public in time and create more issues for Darren Grimes and really, truly, once and for all, completely end his career? So what to do with this video now? This information has arrived. Well, I'm going to carry on regardless because I was always going to explain what he did after his GB News stint and it's now going to be between his GB News stints. And it is amazing that he has returned not just because of the allegations, but also because he was absolutely shite at everything else he turned his hand to. After being sacked from GB News the first time, Darren also left Reason, the platform that he helped set up. And it was rumoured that the departure was due to a Reason student summit featuring Darren and Nigel Farage as speakers. The problem is, despite the event being promoted for many months online on their massive Twitter platforms, it got about as many attendees as you see at your local scout group. So from there, Darren opted for YouTube and more fundraising via his channel, which historically has never attracted many viewers at all. He rebranded his channel as Voice of Britain, presumably because Britain First was already taken. Now, I don't mind admitting that I have a fading YouTube channel. I have 4,200 subscribers and my videos used to get that many views, which is decent for the amount of subscribers. But now I'm lucky if I get a thousand at most. Shit happens. And it's one of the many reasons why I'm stopping making videos very soon. But when you compare Darren's channel to mine, his figures are very depressing indeed. Here he is doing the Nigel Farage pull my finger pose. Turns out Darren barely gets any more views than I do. Darren has a quarter of a million followers on Twitter. He used to be on TV and will soon be on again. And most people have heard his name in some form or other. But on YouTube, aka his next big venture, he only has 6,000 more subscribers than I do. And his average view count is around 5,000 views per video. Despite promoting all of these videos on his Twitter, he uploaded 37 videos over a month long period and only five of those got more hits than he has subscribers. 
He uploaded for one month and then gave up. His last upload got just 583 views and it's been available online for two whole months. On TikTok, Darren did even worse with a paltry 414 followers and despite the occasional hit for a video, he barely gets over 6,000 views per upload. That's a mere 1,000 more on average than his YouTube videos got. And it shouldn't be a surprise when you see how poor quality the videos are. This isn't anything to do with racism, as I've been accused of. This is down to the fact that I don't think we should be unnecessarily be creating divisions where none exist in Britain. I think it's about time that England got up off of their knees and started playing footy. <laughs> But weirdly, all roads led back to reasoned. There seems to be a theme emerging here when Darren goes back to his old jobs. For some reason, for some reasoned, they took back Crafty with open arms. With their 75,000 subscribers, surely Darren can finally make some money post GB News firing. But alas, the most recent uploads on reasoned are doing even worse than his own YouTube channel and his TikTok. My point being that despite his poor viewing figures during his first stint on GB News, his inability to generate audience numbers on TikTok, multiple YouTube channels and even Instagram despite having a huge Twitter platform and despite the sexual harassment allegations that cost him his job originally, he has been welcomed back to GB News on an 8pm primetime slot. Surely this has to be the last roll of the dice for Darren. If he fucks this one up, then he really truly will be unemployable. I just wanted to take however long it's counting down on your screen out to explain something to you. If you hate admin and you want to skip to the end of this countdown, that's fine. Just go ahead. But uh, I was going to make this my last ever long form video where I look into the camera and you see my face um, uh, with uh, obviously some audio bits in it as well. Uh, in the future, it was just going to be audio and maybe with fewer visuals than you've seen in this video. And the reason is because I work six days a week currently, including lots of overtime. I'm absolutely knackered. That's why I look so tired. And I still don't have enough money at the end of the month, despite working my bollocks off. The cost of living is a can't. I also, I am going to make another video because I had a, a Godfather 3 moment when Darren Grimes announced his return to GB News just when I thought I was out. They pulled me back in. So uh, there will be another one coming up soon. And the, the other reason why I'm making another video is because this one isn't going to be monetized. I upload this every 10 minutes of this I make of this video I made I upload it to YouTube to see if I broke any rules and so far just before completion I've broken five so there's no chance of this video earning any money off this video and I worked so fucking hard on it so if you've enjoyed this video or anything I've made over the last seven years how about a little bit of financial appreciation for someone who can't afford to eat yeah um, I just want to thank all the patrons patreon patreon people who stuck with me especially over the last year and uh, I want to thank especially the two people who are flashing up on your screen now for being very generous in December and allowing me to have a good Christmas. Um, I honestly am so thankful for your your gratitude, your, your generosity, you know, and uh, for saying thank you for making videos as well. Um, if you want to show your financial appreciation, then please ideally give me some money on PayPal, a dollar or two, a pound or two, even if it's just a change in your pocket, it honestly helps a lot. Or you can join my Patreon as well, uh, but be aware that it's only open until roughly the summer. I'll charge at the end of April for the start of May, and then you can only got a month or two to enjoy all the bonus content there if you want. But uh, un other than that, there is Ko-Fi available too. So thank you very much for this bit. And now back to the last section of the video. Bye. Right, to end this video, here's a look at some of Darren's grifts in more detail. And many of your favorite grifters are also paid to have the same opinions as Darren has about many subjects. See how many you can tick off in your big Michelin book of grifters. I'm going to go through his three main grifts. Number one, the environment forward slash anti net zero. Well, I'm filming this part of the video on the 8th of March 2023. And as you can see, it snowed overnight. And during the day, it's been absolutely shitting it down. I don't know if you can pick up the snow still falling there. That's the back garden of my house. And it's pretty cold inside the house, too. Yep, here I am. Here I am wearing uh, quite a few layers. Got my hot water bottle that I carry around with me everywhere because uh, Eve. It, I have to do that because the heating's on and it's still fucking cold. It's not quite as cold as it is outside because the heating's on, but it's still cold in the house. Some of the rooms you can see my breath. Why? Because like many houses in this country, there is little to no insulation, right? If only there was some kind of scheme that could be launched that could, I don't know, insulate Britain. If only there's a catchy name that could go along with that. <sighs> 
It's a shame no one's tried to do that, isn't it? Anyway, one of the easiest grifts that grifters have, right, is to pretend, uh, and I quote, that net zero will make us colder and poorer. And they do this during the time when fossil fuels, um, uh, the cost of them has made our bills rise by, you know, four or five times the amount that they used to be. OK, and they have the gall to say, well, if you think you're cold and poor now, imagine how worse it will be when if we use cheaper, easily available versions of energy such as wind power or solar power. God, imagine that. You'll be absolutely you wouldn't have any money in your bank if you used free services like the sunshine and wind and people people lap it up. I think one of the reasons why people lap it up is because uh, I guess they think that not caring about the environment will trigger the libs or or whatever. And that's all they have in their lives, because otherwise it makes no sense. And it makes every Darren Grimes and any grifters uh, fan base look incredibly stupid. They never, ever explain why you would be worse off right they say oh the green extreme is going to you know ruin us as you know society economically and so forth but they never explain what the green extreme is it's quite remarkable that that's the easiest grip they have oh something i don't like it's bad why well i just said it's bad yeah that's all you need that's all the proof you need and it's no surprise that darren has appeared in forums that are pro fossil fuels and he platforms people like Alex Epstein, who literally it's his job to go on about how great fossil fuels are as we basically can't afford to live anymore. And, you know, it's it's, it's all because of their paymasters. They want us to consume as much gas and petrol and whatnot, you know, rather than have a cheap alternative that where we don't have to pay as much money and, you know, they lose out. Basically, it's as simple as that. You know, when listening or watching Darren's propaganda, it's important that you remember net zero has nothing to do with sky high energy bills. Ironically, the amount of truth in Darren's tweets and TV programs has been drastically lowered to around net zero. Here's my face when Darren says he's not a climate change denier, by the way. Hawe, apparently it's going to snow in December. Must be climate change like. Despite what it looks, this is not a stupid tweet. If you remember, Donald Trump did something exactly the same as this a while ago and Darren is simply copying his idol. This tweet, despite making Darren look like an idiot, is a really easy way to increase engagement on Twitter. Thousands of people will come along and call Darren dumb, stupid, an idiot, fucking thick and all that kind of stuff and it's a great way to get his name trending. Trending Darren Grimes. Hello Twitter friends like. There you go, it all worked out for him. Grift number two, he's anti-BBC. It's weird, isn't it, how someone on a rival news network to the BBC would be so anti-BBC. I can't work out why there might be. It's a mystery, isn't it? Now, I've made a handful of videos already about how they defund the BBC campaign is propaganda for morons. You can watch any of those videos uh, available in my Defund the BBC playlist that I've made, especially after making this video. You can find that on my homepage on YouTube. But to sum up its stupidity in a paragraph, Darren champions the Defunder BBC campaign and has done his usual fundraising for it, as you can see here. But the campaign strictly instructs its supporters to give up all live TV. This means BBC, ITV, Channel 4, Sky, TV streamed live on YouTube and even GB News itself, even when it's live on YouTube. If you truly support the Defunder BBC campaign, as the campaign sets out, you can only watch non-BBC on-demand services like all four. If the campaign was not run by morons, they would also tell you that Netflix hosts thousands and thousands of BBC shows over the years. Therefore, stopping paying for Netflix would actually partially defund the BBC, but they haven't mentioned that in their campaign. That's because defund the BBC is unachievable, as it's the Conservative government who decides if the licence fee should be the method of funding, and they just increase the contract to make us pay a licence fee until the late 2030s. Therefore, the campaign should be called Lobby the Government to Change Their Ways and Reform the BBC whilst we sit at home reading library books and playing Scrabble instead of watching TV, but that title isn't as catchy as Defund the BBC. Meanwhile, Darren, who runs a campaign that requires you to stop watching live TV, completely relies on the BBC because every other tweet or video he makes relies on sourcing information from the Beeb, whether it's via their website or reacting to whatever thing on TV has offended him today, which, let's face it, is everything. In fact, his grift would grind to a halt 
if the BBC he relies on was defunded. Darren would actually have to do some work for once, we'd never hear from him again. Grift number three, a regular grift of crafties, is him being paid to be anti-LGBTQ etc etc, despite being gay himself. It's exactly the same sort of grift as being, I don't know, a black propagandist for example, and then pretending racism doesn't exist at all, but then when there is an example of racism in the news, you then defend the racist who did said racism. Darren's anti-LGBTQ grift operates itself in three main ways. Firstly, and most simply, anything that is gay is bad. Secondly, people being informed about lifestyles that are, let's say, alternatives to the traditional straight lifestyles are 100% out of order. Everyone involved should be banned and then crucified, despite Crafty's belief in free speech for all. We as a society cannot be taught about anything homosexual whatsoever, despite Darren, just a few months before he became a grifter, saying this. The fact that in 2015 we have kids who are self-harming due to homophobic bullying is disgusting, it is wrong. And the government is not acting fast enough on adopting sex and relationship education to teach kids about homosexuality, about transsexuality. We should be taught from a young age that these are normal things. These people People are normal people within our society that you are going to meet. Why is more not being done for these poor kids? The third strand of this anti-LGBTQ etc grift is simply to attack trans people at any given opportunity. Trans people who make up just 0.1% of society, but to far-right grifters, all trans people are somehow guilty of sex crimes. In fact, grifters have developed a special skill that we last saw in the movie Minority Report, where technology makes it possible for cops to catch criminals before a crime is committed. To the far right, all trans women are guilty of doing sex crimes in women's changing rooms, despite there rarely being any evidence of any wrongdoing whatsoever. Grifters get upset at rainbow flags, adverts featuring homosexuals, actors on Doctor Who being homosexual, absolutely anything to do with pride and the existence of trans people, and weirdly, pronouns, literal words, they get upset by those. It's almost as if they can monetize hatred. It will never stop being hilarious that the far right stance on minor alterations to language, like pronouns, or trans people existing, is the same as the eradication of women. It's like some kind of lady holocaust which, ironically, 100% of Darren's fan base would have supported 80 years ago, and indeed probably today. That's all I'm going to say about this particular subject at the moment because I've already made a video called The Beginner's Guide to Transphobia a couple of years ago, which is still one of the best videos I've made and is available on my channel. I will link to it in the description box below if you want to watch that later on, and it might even pop up at the end of the video on your screen. Darren's other grifts that I could have mentioned include Brexit support, just crazy, being controlled by Tufton Street who helped install a Prime Minister for a whopping 49 days who managed to destroy the economy, someone who Darren supported wholeheartedly even though it made the immiserated even more immiserated. If it's not blatantly obvious to people that Tufton Street are bad, look at Liz Truss and what happened there. <laughs> Christ, open your eyes people. And then there's the blatant racism of grifters attacking any brown person with an opinion. But I've already made videos about Brexit, about Meghan Markle, quite a few actually, Sadiq Khan, and of course Liz Truss. And I've covered those subjects in great detail, so do check out those videos if you have a moment. In conclusion, many people watching this video will be non-bigoted individuals. Congratulations to you, by the way. But unfortunately, there is some sad news about being non-bigoted. It means we're largely to blame for Darren and company earning vast amounts of money. But at the same time, you could also argue that no one else ever is holding them to account. And because grifters simply won't allow themselves to be challenged on their propaganda. The penultimate thing I want to mention in this video is that Crafty's return to TV will be such a comedy goldmine that I shall be making April 2023 Darren Grimes Month on my channel. I shall bow out of making videos by analysing each of his weekend shows that are coming up in April and uploading a review that rips the piss out of him and his friends a day or two later. So we're looking at about four more videos from me that are like this. And after that, it will probably just all be podcasts for me or I'll sit on my ass and do fuck all. I haven't actually decided yet, to be honest with you. So if I'm lucky and YouTube allows it, I shall name those videos Crafty's Comeback but they are a bit iffy about some uses of language sometimes. Free speech. So thank you all for watching this video. It's been a long one, but I think you'll agree that it's been a good one. I'm very proud of it. Hopefully you can help by sharing it around. And I shall sign off by saying the following few words. 
And you can support me in this latest venture by subscribing to my channel, by sharing and liking content you enjoy, and by supporting this independent journalism with as little as the price of a cup of coffee. Because folks, from the bottom of my heart, many of you have been with us on this journey for years now. I want to thank you once again for hopefully joining us on this next chapter. Because boy oh boy, I cannot wait to get started.